think it's probably important to point out a couple things. In, in this class, um, in, in, you know, we'll talk about positions and, and rankings and, and all that stuff. I, there's, there's tremendous young men in this class. There's tremendous families and, and, and people that have helped raise, raise these young men to be who they are in this class. And I think you, you can probably best gauge that or, or see that from the outside looking in at um, this is a class of guys that was mainly committed throughout the entire season. And as, as we know, you know, there, there, there were struggles through the season, and, and there's reasons for that. And, uh, but you look at these guys, they didn't waver one bit. And that, that says something about, about what these guys are about. It says something about them as people, their families. And in reality, it says about how they see the, where this program is going, the vision they see in this program. They, they have trust and faith in that and the people that are involved. So um, these guys all had options to go a lot of different places. And, and they, they, they stayed right here with, with Maryland. And that, that, that tells you the type of turps we're bringing in. Uh, I think the second part of that it also speaks to um, what a great place this is, and, and with all the things going on, that there, there's a there's a there's a great understanding of, of the the direction of this program and, and the people involved, and and, and uh, people outside this program can feel that. Uh, Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Um, and then, then the last part of that, and I'd like to say, uh, you know, it takes a lot to, to sign a recruiting class. Um, let's just say to sign one particular recruit. It takes a lot of people to do that. It's not just the head football coach or the position coach or the recruiting. There, there's a, a long list. We have an entire recruiting staff, and, and when I say recruiting staff, Anyone that works in our building, whether you're in the, the training room, in the weight room, academics, whatever, you, your, your job is to be part of recruiting. And, and they know that and understand it. We, we have a, a staff from top to bottom that does a great job when, when a young man and his family come visit. Um, everyone's a part of that. And so all of those things together are produce the class that, that, that we're about to talk about, which, you know, as you can tell, I, I can't, can't wipe the smile off my face uh, today. I, I think, you know, football is the ultimate team sport. and. and and you, you've got to stack great classes on top of one another in order to build a team, build the depth you need to go compete in, in the greatest conference uh, in college football, which is what we play in. And so um, th th this puts us a, a long way towards that. Um, you know, we really addressed uh, uh, along the line of scrimmage, which is always something, you know, you, you guys know I've talked about that a bunch. You look at the four offensive linemen that, that, that we, we signed, um, I, there's not a better four in the country in terms of a full class of offensive linemen. There, there's not. I've seen those guys play, play personally. I've, I've watched the film, bit, spent time with them. Just, just the size of them, how they move, what they do, what they're all about. They're, they're the right guys. And you stacked it on top of the, the four we just signed a year ago. Um, you got something pretty special. Uh, on the defense side of the ball, you know, we, we signed a combination of nine players in the front seven. There's nine guys in the, in the front seven, which, which you know, Again, all, all those guys and what their exact role will be, it's a little different between all of them, but, but those guys are really going to help us. And, and, and so we really try to address it at the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think it's a cool thing in this class. There's 11, may, maybe a, a 12th uh, player that will be here mid-year. So we're talking about a, a month from now, guys will be here and roll with us, go through the entire winter conditioning, go, go through spring practice, which, which really goes a long way to say, like, you have a legitimate opportunity to, to, to make an effect on the team as a freshman. Can it happen when you don't do that? Absolutely. But, but the, the odds go way up when, when you're a mid-year grad. And so uh, to have such a, you know, really half the class be that um, is another thing that's just very exciting for myself and our, our coaching staff. So, um, you know. A lot of great players up and down. I'm sure we'll have questions. I think another important thing to point out is there's 15 guys from the DMV. There's 15 guys from right here in our backyard that are, that are part of this class. And there, there's no, been no secret made about that. That, that. that is our recipe. That's our formula. That, that will be our bread and butter always. We have tremendous football players. We have tremendous football coaches in this area. I, I would throw our area up against anywhere in the country when it, when it comes to the level of talent that comes out of here year after year and the, the level of coaching and emphasis that's put on, on uh, football at the high school level all, all the way down through grassroots. Um, it, it's tremendous. And so that, that, that's going to be the lifeblood of this program. And uh, again, so, so 15 guys in, in the class is, is, you know, actions speak louder than words. We're, we're backing that up. And, um, you know, we went down south again and, and got, a, got a couple more tremendous players that, that, that I think are going to come in and make a difference right away. So um, that's us. That, that's the class. So, uh, with that, I'll open up with any questions. Jake, how much further along does a second class like the one you had last year, it's right, the numbers are right around the same, push it further than the class last year? You know what I'm saying in terms of? 
when you're stacking those classes, how much better off are you with you know, two classes of this caliber as right. opposed to one? Don, I think like the the most important thing in the game of football is competition. Because in, in a room, I mean, whatever, you'd be the greatest motivator in the world as a coach, but if, if you got a guy sitting there and he knows that he's the best one in the room and there's no doubt about it, he won't be motivated the same way as when there's someone sitting next to him. It's like, this guy might take my job. All right, that, that's the motivator. Now the guy trying to take his job is really trying to take his job, and they both make each other better. And so, you know, it, it, it just creating depth is to me how you build your program. And, and, and we, we made a point of doing this the right way all along. It, it's We've been recruiting at the high school level for the most part. We're, we're going to take, you know, one or two junior college players in, in, in a class, but we're, we're going to build it with the right guys that are going to be here. They're going to sustain and, and build that competition the right way. And so th this goes a long way to doing that. DJ, uh, you got a kind of a unique guy, Byron Coward, coming in. Um, what do you see from him in terms of how he's going to fit into your system? And um, do you think he could get a second year of eligibility? Byron, uh, I, I, I've had the opportunity to see Byron as a, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old in high school when I was recruiting him at, at another school. And uh, now to see him, you know, perspective is an amazing thing in life. When, 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 you, when you go through an experience and you come out the other end, you gain perspective. He, he's, he's like speaking to, to an adult, to another member of the coaching staff. And, and through this whole process of, um, you know, this, this, this goes way back, you know, or whatever, week two of the season, I think, is when, when, when all this went down. And um, so he's got known for a long time, his mom as well. And so th this all worked out well. But Byron's a tremendous player, tremendous talent. I think everyone can see that and knows that. I think his maturity level and what he's all about is really the thing that, that, that would impress anyone. That you have a conversation with him, you come away impressed. He, he's, he's very engaging and, and uh, he, he mature. And, and so I think he'll come here and do a great job. Um, you know, his, his second year eligibility is, is something that, that, that we're working on and we'll see. I, I think I think he will get it or there's no, no reason he should. Coach, can you, uh, you talked about the DMV and keeping the players here. Can you specifically talk about grabbing two more offensive linemen from DeMatha and then defensive back Raymond Brooks <clears throat> and Alana Roosevelt? Yes, you know, DeMatha, I mean, Coach Brooks at DeMatha, and then I don't know if you guys have been around the program, but, but they got a big line coach that goes by Juice. And I'll tell you what now, they know what they're doing, they're alignment. They, they know what they're doing. I, it is hard to come into a place as a true freshman and play on the offensive line. But you look at look at uh, Terrence Davis did that when his freshman year. Then last year, I don't know how well you, you follow up, but, but Marcus Minor, we think he's going to be like a really, really all-conference player, NFL football player. But still, as a true freshman, his his first real time, besides some, some mop-up time here and there, was came in the Michigan game. When, when Damien went down and, and he, he's, you know, he's sitting there blocking Rashawn Gary, one, one of the best players in the country, they, they didn't even flinch. I mean, he was smiling ear to ear like, let's go do it, and went in there and battled and, and played really well for us. And so, um, you know, that just speaks to the level of, you know, those guys. Because th that's not all us now. You get a true freshman, a lot of what he's playing on is, is, is what, what he learned be, be prior to coming to your program. And so they do it the right way there. They're, they do a tremendous job with their guys. And, and um, so we're, we're going to keep, keep going as much as we can to get more. Coach, last year at the recruiting celebration, you talked on the defensive side about suddenness and impact from linebackers and bringing speed to this team. You seem to have recruited some very versatile linebackers. What does that do to your core? Do you think these kids are going to see the field this year? Yes. Yeah, I mean, they will. I mean, you, you watch those guys play. You watch, you know, I mean, really all, all of those guys. You talk about inside linebackers at first. I mean, you know. Fanage is, is about as violent a player as you're going to find at, at the high school level. And that, 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 that'll carry over to ours. And then, you know, Jordan Mosley is just a tremendous athlete. Um, you know, he, he, he's a guy that can do a lot of different things, cool things at the linebacker spot. Um, Chance is, is another guy that, I mean, he, he flies around, makes plays, really instinctive, has, has a, a great nose for the ball. One of the hardest workers, most determined guys you can be around. Uh, Naheem, when you watch Naheem's video, I mean, you see that guy is, is playing. He, he, he's... He's a little raw at times what he's doing, but he's 100 miles an hour. He, he's trying to hurt you and hit you. And, I mean, that, that, that's what you want out of your linebackers. And so, you know, those four guys in particular inside, you know, with, with Tyler Baylor and Darrell on the outside, um, they, they provide something on the edge that we need. we need. We need guys that can get to the quarterback and need that length and that fast switch off the edge. And they, they certainly provide that. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with how, how we've helped ourselves in those areas. Uh, coach, after winning just uh, four games, you didn't. Um, you don't have a bowl game, and so you, it seemed like you were able to put a little extra focus on the recruiting trail. 
um, in the off season. Um, how did that, I guess, help? And would how would your approach have differed uh, if you had had a bowl game? Well, let, let's let's make no mistake about it. Not, not playing a bowl game did not help us, and it's not something we ever want to do. So it's it's unacceptable. It's not not where we'll ever be this time of year again. Um, you know, we can recruit just fine preparing for a game, and it's it's something. It's part of our job as coaches. So um, it, it's it's we we just, we just sign the same class that we did. You know, whether whether in or out, and in, in many ways, I think you help yourself by 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 putting yourself in a good position in a bowl game. So. Um, I, I think you know. Again, I'll, I'll say a lot of the, the um, you know, why this class came together was, was because of the hard work of the coaches and because of the, the character and, and what these guys are made of that, that are part of the class. PJ, just to follow up on Roman's question on Carrot. Um, was was there any concern on your part in terms of what he did on the field his first two years at Auburn, or was it a matter of scheme and and, and of opportunity? And, and maybe he's in a better fit for this defense as a as a defensive end or a de defensive tackle. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 and I just talk about respect a little bit. Something that, that I've learned through this process now, many years doing it. You, we're all like, I'm a better me when I'm somewhere I'm comfortable. You're a better you when you're somewhere comfortable. Whatever, whatever that is, whether it's a better you know reporter, better coach, better player, better whatever it is you do. When, when you're somewhere that you feel good about it, you're comfortable. And, and so a lot of times, as we all, you click on tape or watch on TV and you see a, guy, a certain guy perform a certain way, and maybe, maybe it's a guy that, that you've known, followed, whatever. I'm just talking in general terms, and it doesn't look, or it's not what you expect, or it never panned out in play. Usually it's oftentimes things that are outside of football. It's not, you know, what, what, what's going on there oftentimes. And so, you know, I, I just think that. I, I know Byron. I know I know he's he's going to be comfortable here. I think I think he's going to excel and be great. Coach, uh, last year I want to say you had three or four players uh, commit from Georgia. This year you have two more. Uh, what, can you, what can you attribute your success to going down into ACC and SEC country and getting those two players? And then I guess also, do you expect to have any more uh, players sign in February? Um, you know, Georgia and Florida is. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of talent down there as well. I think um, when you look at our staff, uh, it, th those are areas I've recruited my whole career. There's guys on our staff that have recruited those areas. For, so we, we have a lot of ties down there. And, and um, you know, so for us, it's kind of like a, a second home. The, the, the DMV is, is, is that, that's our backyard. That's our bread and butter. And we're going to go down there every year and, and, and get a couple guys we feel are, are difference makers for us. Um, so we, we, we've been able to do that. Yeah, it, it, they're good areas to recruit. Um, and, and then the, the more, whenever, whenever you, you get guys from a certain area, it, it makes it that much easier the next time around. Because now when, when a guy's coming up, who's hosting them? Well, the, the, the guy that signed from there last year is his host, and he's telling, you know, and they, they know each other. I mean, nowadays, these kids all know each other. But back, back when, you know, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, when I was playing, I mean, like, I, all I knew was the guys in my own, my own town, you know, but like the, the internet and Twitter and all these all-star games and these, you know, Combines, everything, like everything's made the world smaller. They all know each other, so like w w that helps go back to an area when you got guys on your team from that area. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing that. We, we will have some more guys signed in February. Um, how many? I don't know exactly yet. I mean, we're, we're, we're running a little thin on spots now. Um, there's still some more guys that have decisions to make on on their futures here, and, and, and we're we're helping them with those decisions, supporting them, and. So that, that, that'll a little bit of sway that way. But yeah, there, there's still a couple more spots we're going to sign in the areas we need. I'm um, speaking of February, Coach. Are there certain areas that you still want to address between now and then, the next 1.5 months in particular? The biggest area would be corner. We're, we're, we're going we're to sign at least one or two more corners. Uh, and then other than that, you know, not really. I mean, we're, we're at our number, but just about everywhere else, it's going to be, be you know, best available. And there, there's some, some great players out there that we're still in it with. And, you know, we're going to go swing for defenses. Coach, um, what kind of uh, quarterback is Tyler DeSue, and will he be here in time for uh, spring ball? He, he's a tough quarterback. Like, that, that's, that, that's what I say. He's a tough, competitive. Uh, he's very talented. That's not to take away his, his throwing talent and, and mobility. And I mean, you can watch the tape. He, he's as good as there is out there. But I, I love his toughness, his competitiveness. He, he has all the it factors that you want your quarterback to have. I, I think when you, when you evaluate a quarterback, to me, the first thing you evaluate is toughness. I really believe that that guy's got to be mentally tough, physically tough, because because that's the heartbeat of your team and, and, and the guy that, that's naturally you know your vocal leader. So he, he better have toughness to him. Um, he's a great decision maker. He, he's very smart. He, he you know he loves the game. He's all you know he loves being around the game, watching film and studying it. 
he's all those things. And then, and then now, now you start talking about he's got really good arm talent and mobility. So um, we, we, we think Tyler will be not, not just another another great player at the quarterback position for us. DJ, on, on the early signing <clears throat> on the early signing period, just what are your thoughts on it in general? And do you feel like it helps a program like you guys? I love it. Yeah, I love it. It's it's, it's great. I think it's great for us. Um, I think it's great for college football. I think doing this right now, you you, you look at all these guys. Um, you know, this time of year, 90% of the guys know where they want to go already anyway. So then you go through one other month of recruiting in January where it's just more coaches trying to get in their head, confuse them, tell them different things. It's more families have to deal with home visits or whatever else. It's less time these guys are, are spent on, on their academics because you pulled out of class to meet with coaches and everything else. And I, I'm guilty of it. We, we all do it. So it's not but, – but now you eliminate that opportunity. It's just, listen, these guys know where they want to go. Let them sign. The, 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 the prospect, their family feel good about it. You know, let them sign, and that, now that's done. Now, now they can focus on their academics, finishing strong, making sure they're qualifying, being eligible, finishing the way they want to in high school, and, 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 and whether it's playing basketball or wrestling, whatever else they're doing, focus on that and, and move forward. DJ, you signed uh, four receivers today. Uh, signed a big number last year, but it seems like you guys are looking to get bigger at that, at that position. Um, blocking is an important part of it. How pleased are you with today's haul, and then how big was it getting Deshaun Jones here then? Yeah, there is. Jay Sean's a great player. He, he's a great player. Um, so that, that, that was big, finishing strong with Jay Sean, and uh, we're certainly thrilled about that. But you, you look top to bottom, I and mean, with, with Daryl coming in, I mean, the, again, you, you talk about the length of all those guys. There, there's, there's a difference. But Brian Cobbs, I mean, just a tremendous player. Probably some of the best ball skills I've ever seen. You know, he, he came here back to back weekends in, in passing camp with his team, and just, I mean, was unbelievable. So. Um, all of those guys. I mean, we really helped ourselves at, at that spot, and, and uh, yeah, we're, we're we're trying to improve our size across the board and our speed across the board. You know, like we're trying to get big guys that are fast, whatever whatever position they play. And so we we have been able to do that in a lot of spots. DJ, with this sort of two 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 sections of uh, the of this process, you have another month, or I guess almost two months before the next day. How does that change? And, and and I know you can't talk about specific guys, but you have there was one kid who committed who's going to wait till February, and one kid who's decommitted from another school who's rumored to be going here. How does that change the process in terms of recruiting people who you're involved with or may be involved with? Is it, is, it, is that like the the old days in terms of you know the, the the extra two months and then you just sort of have to put you know get them committed? Um. I guess, I don't know, how, how's it changed? You're saying now moving forward, how's it right. changed? I mean, it'll be, you know, it's much smaller group of guys that, that, that we're recruiting, but, but at the same time, there's, I, I think what's going to happen here is see a lot of guys maybe that, that, that aren't committed or signed somewhere, then there's a large portion of, there's only so many of those guys left, right? So there's more schools focusing on a smaller pool of guys. Um, it'll really help us move forward our evaluations of, of next year's class, 2019, because you know, we're, we're still going to be out recruiting and, and, and seeing, but not, you, go, you go to basketball games, you go see guys, you know, and you can evaluate. And uh, so it'll help us get ahead on that for sure. Uh, but, but that's, yeah, it's, it's a small, smaller pool of guys. I, it, you know, it made December quite a crunch. I mean, every, every guy we signed and then some I, I home visited during, during those three weeks in December. So, it may, I mean, the travel was a little crazy in December, but, but then in January on the back end, there will be nearly as many home visits. There's not, you can't home visit juniors, and we don't have even any spots left for, for the majority of seniors. How many home visits did you do? What's the most home visits you did in one day? In one day? Um, probably three in one day. But some of those are combined. You know, when you, when you have parents in different places or, you know, work at this time and home later, or, you know, there, there, there's, there's more of all of that. But probably, you know, three. Coach, you talked about the need to add more corners. One guy you did get was Eleanor Roosevelt, Raymond Boone. Can you speak about him and what he's bringing to your program? Oh yeah, and someone I forgot. Someone asked about Raymond earlier. Sorry about that. Uh, I can't forget about Raymond, man. Ray is a, a, a great football player. He's physical. Uh, just he can play on either side of the ball. I mean, we're, we're bringing him in to play play defensive back and probably safety, uh, but he, he can play a lot of things. He, he's he's very athletic, really good ball skills. Um, and just a guy. I mean, he, I feel he's already on the team. He, he's around her so much. Um, you know, he, he's he, he's he's a part of us. He's a part of this area. He represents the DMV. He's you know he's he's a guy everyone knows about, talks about. Um, so we're we're really excited about Ray. I, mean, I think he'll have a great career.
Uh, coach, could you talk about the benefit of being a coach to, close to a school like the Matthew Catholic High School? And since they're known for producing a high level of talent, what's the benefit of being able to be near a school that close? There's tremendous benefit of being centrally located in, in the DMV where we are with a whole number of schools. There, there's, again, tremendous coaches, tremendous talent around here, and the, the major benefit is, and, and, and we track all these things, the, the number of times a guy visits your campus directly correlates to the, to the percentage of, of you actually signing him. So every time a guy comes one more time, that percentage goes up. It, they're, they're right hand in hand. So when a guy is, you know, within, you know, three hours from here, and as you keep getting closer, whether it's, you know, 20 or 15 minutes from here or whatever, they're here more and more. So when you look at this class, I mean, you know, we, we can run down those numbers, but I mean, some of these guys have been here 30 sometimes. And so like, they, they know, us. That, that's the best part of recruiting. They know us, they, they know, I can go do some PowerPoint presentation and talk about recruiting when someone comes to visit one time, but and that, that, that's probably a bunch of BS, or they can just be here every day and they can see me in a team meeting on the field coaching in the weight room, our, our strength staff, they can watch the position coach out on the field or you know whatever it is or nothing more than just hanging out in the office I and mean, we, we have guys around all the time and that's that, that to me that's our formula i tell our guys just just be us don't don't put on a show when it's a recruiter just be us and let let them see how we are and, and get around our players and see how they are and how we interact with them so that that's that's the biggest benefit and uh you know i also want to point out just talking about guys close to the areas one of the receivers i forgot to mention is, is dante demas from from friendship Dante is about as good as you'll find out there as well. For a guy as long as he is, to move like he does, change direction and, and top end speed is, is, you don't find it very often. I, I'll tell you now, like the, 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 those are guys that can play anywhere in the country. And uh, I, 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 knew I forgot to mention him, so uh, we're, we're, we're thrilled about having Dante for sure. Coach, you brought in uh, one kicker, so you must have a lot of confidence in this kid, Joseph Petrino. What did you see in him that made him the one? He is the one. I, I'm, I'm just really excited we have a kicker. Uh, you know, like, gosh, that was one of the things I, t I did this morning at staff meeting. You know, we got one. Uh, yeah, he, he's really talented. He came, he came to our camp, and, um, you know, it was interesting. We, we had, um, you know, along with our coaching staff, we had other guest coaches that were here to, to help with the kicking camp, and some guys I, I know and trust. One of them was a former – Former player of mine that, that, that has had a long, good year in the NFL kicking, and uh, he, you know he was here hanging out with me. And, and I, I talked to each guy separately, just kind of give me your thoughts. And, and all the guys were wearing different numbers at the camp, so no no names. They have they have a, a you know Maryland jersey on. They got a number on it, and like to a man, every guy told me the same number, which was the number in my head too. I mean, so you know it wasn't a group collaborative because sometimes you know two guys say one thing, so the next guy just kind of goes along with it. It was all separate. Everyone said. Said Joseph, and uh, he's uh, that, that's how good we think he is. He, he's an outstanding young man, great, great family, and so yeah, we're, we're counting on him coming to do it. Is it true that he can kick with either foot? In which way is he better? He can. There, there's YouTube evidence that you, you you can pull it up and yeah. do your research on that. But he, he can kick right and left, and and I, I don't know, I man. On, on the, the YouTube videos out there, he, he hit like a uh, he can hit it well over 50 with his right and his left. I think he hit a 45 yard or something. So he's talented. Coach, what do you feel the, the, is the easiest uh, thing for you to sell about this program, about this school, when you go out and recruit? And I guess conversely, you know, your third, uh, you know, winter in this mix. What, what do you feel is your biggest obstacle, and as you build this program, you know, getting the right kids, the right athletes here? I mean, you know, we have. A, we, you just go down the list. I, I, the reason we've been able to keep so many guys around here, especially from the DMV. And also attract guys from from other areas as we talked about earlier to, to come up here is the, this place checks all the boxes. You want a great education? Well, you're going to get it here. You're going to get a top 15 public institution, which will probably be a top 10 by the time these guys leave with with, with the merger with medical school and all that. That's what it's going to be. So you, you can't, you know, it's hard to find better better degree, better academics. Um, when you're when you're speaking on, on academics and all that, let's just talk about all the opportunities outside of just the education piece in terms of networking with internships and, and all that because of the area we live in. We, this is unique. People sometimes don't realize from around here how unique this is. There's not a lot of Division One football programs that are near a major metropolitan area. There, there's not. You, you, can, you can go through them, you can count them on one hand. And, and, and so we're, we're right here, arms length away from D.C. And, and, you know, whatever, 20-some miles or 30 miles from Baltimore, you can't, can't beat it. There, there's so much opportunity. For